and welcome to Teacher Gimbal's channel. Today we'll be going over illustrative math, geometry, unit one, lesson 16. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe by hitting the button down there. And if you want personalized videos or videos on very specific topics or lessons, if you sign up to my Patreon, which you can find in the bio, you can go ahead and you can request any lesson and I'll make it for you in the next few days. There's also options for tutoring there as well if you need a little bit of extra help. Let's get started. Problem one. For each figure, identify any angles of rotation that create symmetry. So when we're talking about angles of rotation to create symmetry, usually we're talking about in the center point, what can we do that can rotate the figure that it is going to end up exactly where we started. So if I'm going to rotate around the center point, this white circle, he's going to go up and he's going to map onto the black circle and a 180 degree rotation, which is gonna make this figure look similar, but the colors aren't gonna match up. And it's not gonna match this original figure until we go all the way back around. So there's no angle of rotational symmetry here because we have to go all the way around for the white circle to end up back where the white circle started. For this one, if we're rotating the shape, say we're starting here, we can rotate it 180 degrees because when we rotate this shape 180 degrees, this triangle is going to come to here. This one's going to come down there. This one's going to go over there. And we're actually going to have that rotational symmetry. So here, 180 degrees will provide us rotational symmetry. Now for this rotational symmetry, I notice that we have three different legs. We're going to have rotational symmetry each time this leg is going to shift to that leg. So this looks like it's about 120 degrees. Now we would also have rotational symmetry when this leg can slide, rotate all the way around to that leg. So it's gonna be 120 plus 120, which is 240 degrees. And then would have symmetry when that leg goes back to the beginning, which is 360, which that's just flipping it all the way around. So we don't count that as a degree of rotational symmetry. So there's rotational symmetry for this one and this one, but no, no, no rotational symmetry for the first one. All right, let's go on to question two. A triangle has a rotational symmetry that can take any of its vertices to any of the other vertices. So that immediately tells me if the vertexes are going to map to the, each vertex by rotational symmetry, that means the vertexes have to be, or the angles of the vertexes will have to be congruent because they wouldn't map if they weren't the same measure. Now we have um, select all conclusions that we can reach from this. So all sides of the triangle have the same length. Well, if this vertex slides to this vertex, that means this side right here that we have is gonna go ahead and he's gonna rotate to that side. So it actually does have to be the same length. So that is correct. All angles have the same measure. We just talked about this. And finally, all rotations take one half of the triangle to the other half of the triangle. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I know if I rotate this triangle, this point, he's going to rotate to this point. And then that point will go here and this point will go there. And I don't think one half of the triangle is going to the other half of the triangle. I think they're trying to mix you up with line of reflection, so line symmetry. So we're going to cross out that answer. And we're done. Let's go on to the next question. Problem three. Select all angles of rotation that produce symmetry for this flower. So let's look at the flower figure, and then we're going to talk about the rotational symmetry. Now we know, I'm going to look at this petal right here. The first rotational symmetry we're going to have is when this petal goes to that petal. And the degree that we're turning at is 90 degrees. So we have 90 degree rotational symmetry. But we'll also have rotational symmetry when this petal goes all the way around to that petal which is 180 degrees. We're also gonna have rotational symmetry when that pedal shifts all the way to that pedal, and that's gonna be 270 degrees. The last rotational symmetry will be all the way around, which is 360 degrees, and we don't count that one. So those are the three measures of rotational symmetry we have. And looking down, the answers that we would cover would be 90, 180, and 270. And we're done. All right, let's go on to the next question. Problem number four. 
identify any lines of symmetry the figure has. So we're talking about lines of symmetry, which we're talking about reflections, not rotations, not rotational symmetry. So the first line of symmetry I see is here, because if we reflected the figure over the line, it would land back onto itself, or map onto itself is the geometric way of saying it. And the second line of symmetry I see is right here, that if we re reflected the figure over this line, this horizontal line, again, the shape would map onto itself. And those are the two lines of symmetry that I see. Problem number five. A triangle has a line of symmetry. Select all conclusions that must be true. So I'm going to draw a triangle with a line of symmetry. And this might not be the best triangle. The triangle could look different. It could look like this. It could look like this. There's lots of options. Pretend those sides are equal. All sides of the triangle have the same length. Well, right here, I know I got a long side and two shorter sides, and still we have a line of symmetry. So that does not have to be true. It must be true. All angles of the triangle have the same measure. Well, in this one, we got a skinny angle and two fat angles. They don't have to have the same measure. No sides of the triangle have the same length. Well, that, that can't be true because this side is going to have to match up to this side. So those two sides have to have the same length. So that is also not true. No angles of the triangle have the same measure. Well, if this side of the triangle is rotating over or flipping over, not rotating, I apologize, is flipping over a line of symmetry, this angle is going to have the same measure as this angle right there. So they are going to have to have the same measure. Two sides of the triangle have the same length. Yes, this side right here is always going to map onto that side right there when we go over a line of symmetry. So this has to be true. And two angles of the triangle have the same measure. Yes, when we have the symmetry, this angle matches that angle. It's reflected over and they will have the same measure. So the correct answer to this question is E and F. And I always like drawing pictures or a couple different pictures to do this because it's much easier to see visually than it is just to think about it in your head. So always draw a sketch when you're doing questions like this. Problem six, and this is one of my favorites. Here are four triangles that, oh, problem seven is my favorite. Here are one of the four triangles that have been transformed by a different transformation. Which transformation is not a rigid transformation? Well, rigid motion keeps two things, the angle measure and the length of the sides. Right here, I see that the sides of our transformed triangle are smaller, not rigid motion, and we're done. Let's go on to the next question. Problem seven. Matt, this is the one I like. Match each directed line segments with a translation from polygon P to polygon Q. So I always, we're going from P to Q by that directed line segment. So these questions I really like doing, particularly on this screen, because all I need to do is I'm going to choose, we're going from P to Q, and I'm going to choose a point on P, the corresponding point on Q. I'm going to draw that line, and I'm going to drag my screen down. I'm going to say which directed line segment matches this guy. And if you see, haha, -ha, D matches. So the answer for the first question is going to be D. I'm going to do the same thing, P to Q. I choose one point here, the corresponding point there. I draw my directed line segment, and I can see which one doesn't match. It matches here. So that's going to be B. For this directed line segment, I start with one point here, the corresponding point there. I draw. The distance and the angle that it went at, or the not the angle, but the direction it went, that matches C. So we're going to call this C. Drag us up a little bit. And then our last one, we went from P to Q, which means we started here, corresponding angle or point right there. And that guy matches A. And we're done. And that's how you can find those directed line segments. Make sure that you're always using corresponding points and you've correctly identified your image in your pre-image. All right, if you have any questions, see any mistakes, post them in the comments below. If you want more videos like this, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.